In this video, we'll be discussing application design with a framework called EXTJS and the .NET framework, since that's what the application in our example is using. In the first part of this video, we're going to discuss application design in general by highlighting a particular design architecture called MVC. In the second part, we'll be discussing MVC as it pertains to the application in our example, which uses, as I said, EXT and .NET frameworks. Or I'm sorry, EXTJS and .NET frameworks. In the third part, we're going to discuss the steps involved behind the scenes when a user clicks on a button to trigger a click event in our C Sharp application. For part one, let's discuss MVC architecture. MVC stands for Model View and Controller. And by the way, I will be linking to this article in the description in case you're interested. It's very helpful. So this is exactly how our application is designed with a model, view, and controller. MVC architecture separates out the duties and interactions for each part of the application into layers, three layers to be exact, to keep it organized, streamlined, and easy to debug and maintain. For example, when there is a bug or feature we want to add, we'll know exactly which layer to target and work with. It saves a lot of time by using the MVC architecture. Let's go over what a model, view, and controller are before we dive deeper. A model handles the data and the business logic, as you can see here. If you don't know what business logic is, don't worry. We'll discuss this in part two. But for now, think of business logic as logic that applies specifically to the problem at hand for the particular model we're working with. The model gives the controller a data representation of what the user has requested, and this data representation is always the same, no matter which view is used. In our .NET application example, the models serve as nice containers in which to bind our data to and transport it from layer to layer, which I'll illustrate in a diagram that I drew. These model containers make for a more organized, predi predictable design that reduces issues and makes our code clean and easy to maintain. A view is what users see on their screen. The view represents our data in various supported formats and layouts. These formats and layouts could be in the form of a table like this, a list, like this, or a matrix, like this. They're all similar but different, but they do share one thing in common. They all display the exact same data. It's just shown in different ways. The view also displays the controls for actions the user can take, such as buttons, checkboxes, text boxes, and so on. Keep in mind that the view does not process any data or do anything really logic-wise other than simply display our data in the way we specify. The controller carries out the user request by calling the resources or the objects necessary to successfully complete these requests. Basically, the controller is the brains of the operation because it contains the internal logic for the entire application. Think of this as housekeeping logic. It's keeping everything in order for us. Controllers can receive the requests from the view via an HTTP GET or POST request. And this happens when the user clicks on a control in the view, such as a button. In our example, the user request is indeed the clicking of a button that will allow another window to pop up. We'll go into detail of, of what this click event entails in part three. 
Typically, the controller calls the appropriate model needed and selects the appropriate view needed. Part three, or I'm, excuse me, part two. There are three layers for every, every application. Here's our application running in Visual Studio. Every MVC oriented application has three basic layers. A user interface layer, which is the view. A business layer, which can be described as the model. And a data access layer, which can be described as the controller. The UI layer is the view that we discussed in part one. So it's the view. Again, this is the layer that we can see in our browser that displays forms, buttons, and so on. In our application, the view can be found here inside the web app, and then inside app, and in the view folder. So all of this stuff here represents our views. In this application, we have several of them. Claimant, client, reps, and so on. The second layer, the business layer, performs business logic, which in our application, in our C sharp application, uh, the business logic takes place in the manager. You'll see in our diagram, as this can get confusing. But for now, let's discuss what is business logic. Think about it this way. We want our application to be smart enough to handle any situation thrown at it. If a user clicks on a button, we only want the controller to carry out the request if it makes sense to do so. Let's examine a real life scenario. Imagine you're standing at an ATM. You swipe your debit card and enter your PIN. After entering your PIN, you press the OK button to allow access to your bank account. And then you can withdraw money or do whatever you were trying to do. But you only want the system to allow you access if the correct PIN is entered, right? Of course. The business logic determines if you did or didn't enter your PIN correctly and allows or disallows access accordingly. The business logic that makes sense for your application is written in the business layer or in our C-Sharp application in the manager, as we'll discuss. Next, the third layer, the data access layer, which is basically the controller in our MVC architecture, retrieves data from our database but remember, it's not the database itself. And it coordinates and calls whichever objects are needed to carry out the user's request. The business layer never communicates directly with the UI layer because the data access layer always acts as the middleman. Anything deviating from this violates the MVC design and makes for a messy application with hard to maintain code. Applications have client-side code and server-side server code, so keep this in mind. The server side of the application, which are the, the actions that take place in the web browser, and the server side, which are the, the actions that take place in the compiled code, written in a language such as c -sharp, have their own renditions of these three layers. So in other words, the client-side of your application has its own MVC, and the server side has its own version of the MVC. Our diagram in part three will illustrate this. So without further ado, let's see our handy dandy diagram. So this illustrates the journey of a button click event which starts at the UI layer and ends at the UI layer. So it takes a whole cycle 
from beginning to end. It takes a big circle, which you'll see illustrated by the arrows. And this is pertaining to a C-sharp application. So if you start here on the client side in your browser, you have your UI layer or your view. This particular view has a form and a button. And as soon as the user clicks this button, it calls the controller on the client side, which, as we said, the controller carries out user requests by calling the resources or objects necessary to complete this request. So it will call whichever objects are needed. In the case of C Sharp, this calls our client side store. And stores are designed to talk to databases or send HTTP requests. The client side store sends an HTTP request which takes us into our server side. This HTTP request is sent to the handler, which is essentially our server side controller. But in C sharp speak, we refer to it as the handler, which is a file that you will see in your C sharp application as dot ashx or special handler. So let me show you that here. Sorry, right here. These handlers are essentially your server side controllers. So back to the diagram. The handler then calls the manager to process the business logic. So basically, did what the user do make sense? Can we proceed? Is it okay to carry out this event? If the manager determines that it's okay, we call the server side store, which talks to our database. We want to retrieve whatever is needed to carry out the request and populate it in our browser, right? So we talk to the database. Database says, here's your data, hands it back to the server side store. And now we reverse the process in our cycle. In our C sharp model here on the server side acts as a container between these layers. So the server side store sends off the data back to the manager, which hands it back off to the handler in our C sharp model. The handler then binds the data to a JavaScript client side model because we can't run C sharp code in the browser. It's compiled code. We have to use a client-side language such as JavaScript. So this JavaScript client-side model then is passed back to our client-side store, which, continuing a reversal process, is handed back to our controller, and then handed back to the UI layer to display whatever was requested from the user completing our journey.